Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good day, good night. Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the round of eight uh, match number three between Dusty Griff and Martin Broadcloak. Uh, and thank you to our host today, RPG Limit Break, uh, for letting us put on this fantastic show of the Adamant Cup Free Enterprise, the Final Fantasy IV Randomizer. My name is Possum Morpheus, and I am joined in the booth by the one, the only, the man with the velveteen voice, Commander Leonhart. How you doing this afternoon, Commander? Aw, I'm, I'm doing well, Possum. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here with you for, for this, oh, this, this match. They went to game three, which, given the caliber of these racers, I'm not surprised. I mean, Dusty Griff, two-time... Enterprise champion, winner of the Dragoon group. He's gone through so many tournament level seeds with just one character because he can. And, you know, I mean, no surprise to see him getting this far. Yeah, Dusty Griff is one heck of an opponent uh, to go up against, one heck of a runner. But I think that uh, we can't forget Martin Broadcloak in all of this as well. Uh, an individual who is known for running the most difficult of seeds for fun uh and someone who just casually has been making top eights in tournaments ever since bursting onto the scene a little while back uh a force to be reckoned with not just in free enterprise but other randomizers other games uh a huge history of performance with martin and one thing to look out for dusty's always been miles ahead of the field I think the field is finally, after all these years, starting to catch up, and Martin is no exception to that. Yeah, the, the level of play has just gone up all around in Free Enterprise over the past few years, and that's really a testament to how helpful and open all of the people in this community are with their knowledge. So everyone here that's looking on in this tournament and has seen it and all the fun and is thinking this looks like fun but man these guys are good we promise we're, we're all happy to help you and get as good as you can get to absolutely 100 percent agree with that the the best possible thing uh you know for the community is to to keep the community going uh making sure everyone gets the assistance they need in learning the game and playing the game that we've all come to enjoy and love uh, speaking of things to enjoy and love, <laughs> A, we got a Ridius start, and B, yeah. we have not one, not two, not three, but four Darkness Crystal Objectives, Commander Leonhart. And we have a couple of mages, a Kainatso, a Pan, which is required, so we are <laughs> but a Tower Key, <laughs> Underground Access, a Sand Ruby, and a Darkness Crystal away from Go Mode, folks. We need four more key items total. And two of them simply involve getting underground and getting to the moon. Uh, yeah, if we see Atella and we see Darkness early with two right. Black Mages, mm -hmm. boy, oh boy, could we be in for some early fireworks. Yeah, we're, we're both on the same page there. I mean, the, the seed so far is begging for a D-Machine grind in my book with the, so many Darkness gated objectives and those two Black Mages right off. Yeah, we're going to see. And we have some instant divergence from our runners. Uh, not any different from prior matches between the two of them. Uh, Dusty loves his Damsian opener. Give him some cash to go shopping and some extra loot boxes. Martin likes to hit that Troya free key item and public treasury uh, right away. We see a samurai armor coming out of the Damsian basement. Great cash for Dusty. And a silence stick coming from uh, Bedward there. A Thunderclaw in Damsian basement as well. So honestly... Nothing really terribly exciting there. The Thunderclaw, probably the best thing that's been found so far. Yeah, I don't hate a silent staff for some mages. There are much better options. I'm looking at you, Mute Knife. But <laughs> agreed, Ooh. like that dancing dagger. Yeah. Honestly, and the beret. Public treasure is probably better off than anything else we've seen so far. <laughs> yeah, so interestingly enough with that dancing dagger, uh, for anyone who's played the vanilla game, Rydia and a dancing dagger should be something that's fairly iconic and recognizable in this game. It is no different uh, in the, the randomized edition. While Rydia will only start with four agility, dancing dagger is still the best member of this party right now. Uh, and honestly, you can even put it on Palum because he starts with eight agility instead of four. 
and just put him in the center slot and let him start using that dancing dagger as an item and really go to town. You mean exactly what Martin is doing right this second? Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that, in fact. <laughs> It's like they know what we're doing and we know what we're talking about or something. Yeah, and I think Chad is pointing out that Rydia started with a dancing dagger as well. So, uh, I mean, zoom, zoom, right? Like, the yeah, best part about not? dancing daggers, they also can be used against D machines, both to trigger them and to kill them. It's there the perfect go. setup. I mean, it just keeps on rolling in. <laughs> but. After crossing back, Martin's gonna come here. Maybe Martin's gonna do damn sand or is he? Nope, he's just gonna go straight to the or to the hovercraft rather. Yeah, so Martin's gonna miss out on that samurai armor, so he's gonna be a little bit more cash strapped than Dusty. But by not looting the extra boxes, he is going to pull ever so slightly ahead, uh, just you know, at twenty seconds or so. Uh, so we'll see if the money ends up being a factor and ends up being worth that uh, that small bit of time that Martin's going to pick up on Dusty. And a lot of that will, you know, we'll find out about it right now with uh, with this Hobbs check. We're also getting a front side of Hobbs check for the summon uh, from Martin here. What will Rydia get today? Uh, looks like it's a gin summon, which is not the worst. Yeah. It's, it's kind of right there in the middle. It's not a womp, but it's not a, ooh, an amazing. So you'll take it and you'll move on. And to answer the question in chat, no, this cannot be Bahamut, nor can it be Leviathan. It could be Asura or Sylph or Odin, but it's not going to go that big. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's capped basically at like Titan. Um, yeah. That's Sylph is usually the best thing you can get. Uh, but looks like Martin also was able to pick up an Ogre Axe uh, from the backside of Hobbs, which is really quite good. And a Gaia hat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> of course. Of course. There's a Tella. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, stairs in D Machine, anyone? <laughs> uh, darkness Crystal in Ant Lion. Let's just, let's just call it now. <laughs> Yeah, this, uh, this has all the potentials uh, of being the zoomiest of zoomers. Uh, we, we shall see, of course, but I don't know who I'd favor in a, a jet seed. I know that Martin, based on the first two seeds, where he has done D-Machines in both, is much more willing to do a D-Machine grind than Dusty Griff. This party right now, with a Tella, with a Rydia, and with a Palum, if this don't scream D-Machine at you when you find a Darkness Crystal, I don't know what does. Right. Well, uh, <laughs> Martin making good use of that vampire. No surprise. Want those damaging J-Adams used early when your party's struggling with damage and makes this Leviathan fight a little bit faster. But these little bits of speed can add up. Yeah, Martin just being very optimized with his early game J-Adam usage the early game dancing daggers instead of lit ones. Just right now, pushing as much of an advantage as he can with what little utility has been available. Uh, got through that Leviathan fight considerably quicker than Dusty was able to. And also now picks up a Gaia drum from Antlion Cave. So that's a really nice find as well early on that uh, penetrates walls for things like uh, orbs, Magus Sisters, Bygin, and does great AOE damage early. Yeah, it'd be very helpful to speed up a annoying boss early. Like this gauntlet, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my least favorite gauntlets. Uh, <laughs> the reason is you, you just don't have good stuff to deal with it when you find it. You really don't. Uh, so you, you have to use J items, you have to get creative. In this case, Martin now has a Rydia getting levels, and I don't know if that's what he wanted, but it's what he's getting now. Uh, and yeah, we're kind of in a situation where fate has chosen that Rydia is staying alive, and this gauntlet will see who can get through it quicker. Again, Martin making great use of these dancing daggers.
Yeah, and if we get some levels on Palum, he should probably already have a level 2 spell for any more dig formations that needed. But we'll see. But yeah, as long as it's just two, you can go Dancing Dagger, Dancing Dagger, and not worry about Palum's probably limited MP pool, since I don't think Martin's tented up. Yeah, this is one where, I mean, you could probably throw out an Ice 2 with the kid, and likely get through everything, but he doesn't have much in the way of any stat boost right now. So these Dancing Daggers, again, giving that vanilla experience of just being the best thing available. The best party member right now is the Dancing Dagger, and the second best party member is also the Dancing Dagger. <laughs> and the third best party member is the Stack of J items that haven't quite been exhausted yet. Yeah, I think um, both runners are going to carry through a, uh, a Gaia drum from this. So you're going to see that Boreas that got used, but that Gaia drum, that Firebomb are going to remain. And that is important because if our runners run into something like, let's say, Back Attack Magus Sisters, well, now they have a big bomb for it too, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you can, is, that's a, a <laughs> refund, right? Kind of like you traded a Boreas for some levels and, and a big bomb. Kind of. I'll buy it. Plus, you know that Alt Gauntlet's out of the way. There's a few objectives up there where you wouldn't want to see an Alt Gauntlet as part of that. And I'm particularly looking at you, Masamune Alter. I mean, we <laughs> in chat would love to see it, but the runners are like, whew, thank goodness. Yeah, knowing how many lunar objectives are required here, you're pretty relieved as a runner to know that the Gauntlet is off the table. The Gauntlet at the White Spear Altar is fine. Uh, the Gauntlet at Cave Bahamut is typically fine. The gauntlet at the Masamune spot is awful. The gauntlet on the giant is awful. Uh, <laughs> so it's one of those situations where the runners are very happy to see that. Uh, Dusty Griff also picks up his big bomb. Martin bought a 10 stack of Ether ones. Uh, so fully preparing for a potential D machine run. Yep. Well, it looks like to me. And Dusty Griff right on his heels, both of our runners, aside from that early crisscross, taking a very Standard straightforward route, neither one of them opting to attempt a single dip for rule with the starting pan. They're just, they're just gonna go right here and get this check out of the way. Yeah, and it, it makes sense because you <laughs> you still need XP to get anything going with this party. That is the one major drawback. Dancing daggers are going to be fine for the overworld, but as soon as you get underground, you're, you're dead if you're relying on dancing daggers, just to put it bluntly. Yeah, not not going to get the job done once we get that power step up. Absolutely. Yeah, no time to be cute about this fight. Still just hammering away with all of these J items while the getting's good. Eventually, we're going to get Palom up to Quake, and then that's going to be what cares. Yeah, if there is no early darkness crystal, Quake becomes quite important. Uh, also, really fortunate targeting on Martin's side. Uh, all of the Petrify is going on Tella, which means that he's going to be able to get through this fight with no issues of having to heal or anything like that. And frankly, the XP not going to Tella here is actually a good thing. So, overall, very fortunate targeting there, and we'll see if Dusty is as fortunate. Yeah, if Martin's planning on doing Reflect Strats, then he's going to want as much XP on Ready as possible, just because that's a long haul to nuke, and keeping yeah. Tella down as the anchor makes all kinds oh, of... Oh, hello. Oh, my goodness. Um. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my goodness. So... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm here for this because I am a child of ZZ3, the tournament that is 94 weeks old. Uh, I love my D machine grinds. I love my power overwhelming with mages. You can't see it, chat, but I am drooling as if there were chicken put in front of me right now. This is a lovely seed from my eyes. I just want to go now. Like, you have to do ordeals right now and be done. Well, you have to do ordeals to get weak. I say Rosa. <laughs> oh, Rosa. Uh, Rosa. Kane, Edge, Young. You want someone as Val Insurance. That is your dream right now. And we also don't know who's in Baron in yet. So there are two character checks that are outstanding that could be available for our runners. 
Yeah, and that Val's a good point. Like, if someone grabs a Rosa and just demonies to White Nuke Nuke or close and then finds a Val in one of these objective spots on the moon or on the giant, that, that could be a bad day. Yeah, and this is... This is very, very interesting. We do get a bit of divergence here. Martin is heading to the moon. Oh, I thought Dusty was going to Baron. Sorry, no divergence. Uh, Runner's <laughs> doing the same thing. Uh, how about convergence instead? <laughs> And going definitely like all right tell me who that fourth character is are, are we go now or am i still party hunting and i would guess he would maybe well actually i don't know if he'd peek cave bahamut just to see who it is i wouldn't bother because you're you're just going to come back with nuke nuke and white or nuke nuke and a, a zerker or nuke nuke and nuke would you like you know <laughs> i mean do we really need healing if everything no. just dies <laughs> no if everything melts healing is irrelevant uh the best at defense is a great offense and by god three nukes at the let's what just, 30 minute just, mark yeah you know, let's just find um <laughs> some elixirs in a shop that, that, that'll do right for healing uh, that's all we really need i mean we yeah. saw cure what was it twos or threes in troy well, there's Cure 2s in, in uh, Mysidia there, which is great for the runners. Dusty doing a little bit of shopping here. Uh, coming across those Cure 2s, which is fantastic. Uh, those Cure 2s really help with a D-Machine grind when you have no healing other than Tella. But I think with Martin, he's not even going to check Baron. I think he's going to go straight to Ordeals and say, uh, this, is, this is my team, and I will eventually get rid of this Tella, and I will find someone to to be Val protection also looting his favorite chocobo forest south of ordeals and finds a karate key yeah i do like a little duck into those it's like especially in some other like early seeds where you don't want to take the time to heal but you've got a white mage you know white mage heals everybody up talk to the white chocobo use that as you're camping and loot the forest while you're in there Yeah, definitely can do that. You heal up and then you just get that uh, that white choke of both, uh, restore the MP and kind of head on uh, head on up from there. You got Martin going through and uh, going up ordeals, putting a change rod on one of his his uh, palums here, and opting to uh, get everyone but Tella in the back row. So this is going to be a a mage palum, the one with levels already, and then some dancing daggers. And we see Dusty making a second trip back to the shop here. Uh, may have seen something he liked. Uh, looks like he is going for maybe some cabins here? Yeah, looks like some cabins. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a Asura in the front spot, which is going to give our runners a chance to show off some of the things they know how to do. <laughs> yeah, this is a little interesting. I'm kind of surprised to see a veil going up here it looks like we're going to to use yeah, double trying. star veil here for asura um life locking would have been interesting here as well if martin knows the timing while life locking mm -hmm. with things like bluff twin um because a lot of the times here you can just bluff twin and then oh yeah that's that's an issue you yeah. Flare reflects, so... <laughs> yeah, Comet, Comet goes through, Flare bounces. But, uh, you know, it hit Tella, so... Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're getting some reflected Fire 2s here and some Dancing Dagger throws. Thankfully, this Asura has, well, absolutely no attack stat at this spot. I think it's the second right. least punchy in the game behind Antlion Cave, so the party is in zero danger here. Uh, it's just a matter of this fight may take a little extra time now due to not having those extra dancing dagger hits. Yeah, we'll see how long it takes Dusty to get through. Dusty only grabbing one chest in here, but it was that change rod. So, you know, if you're going to get one thing out of ordeals, that's probably the thing you wanted. Yeah, absolutely agree. That's the best pickup on this mountain for the team. And Palum has decided that he wanted a uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken himself, but uh, forgot that you need chicken for that and not yourself and has decided that he is fire twoing and uh will not be getting xp from this fight which is a little awkward 
And Martin's Asura fades out at 1704, and it looks like Dusty will also be double veiling to deal with this Asura in a more, shall you say, a more certain way, rather than a more aggressive play to try and get a little bit of time. Yeah, I would have liked to see our runners go for like a, a multiple bluff twin where you can peel like 2,000 to 2,500 damage off uh, and then just finish off with Dancing Daggers. But this is definitely the safer route. Um, and with what's on the table for our runners with what might be the most obvious D machine grind I've ever seen in my life, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's no reason to, to you know try to throw against Asura when you know what's coming. Um, and we do see a, an Octoman here going to get uh, lit up, pun intended. Hmm. And uh, our runners will be through that very easily. Yeah, Octoman, I'm not going to cause any kind of problems here. I mean, for this stage of the game, it is a bit on the punchy side, but also it just doesn't have the HP to stand up to this assault. Yeah, 3,000 health can be a problem here, but not when you're taking 1,000 damage per lit, too. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's not going to last. And Dusty fades out at about 18.33. So at the moment, Dusty is about a minute and a half behind Martin. Plenty of time to make that gap up. Now, one of the things also with the, the giant manipulations that are out there, you can easily lose a minute to 90 seconds setting up the giant, depending on oh, yeah. bad rolls on your step charts, whether you do it inside of the giant or outside of Baron or Mesidia. There's a lot of different things in play as to how lucky or unlucky you can get on your setup. We could very well see Dusty Griff get into a D machine grind before Martin, despite being a full fight behind, just based on the fact that he could get a better setup. Yeah, absolutely. Martin wandering in, checking for our ordeals key item. And it is... Oh, of course it oh, is. Oh, hey, well, no hook route. <laughs> so we can run the pan checks, and if um, we've got uh, Sand Ruby, uh, Sheila 1, Sheila 2, or at the pan bonk, then hey, look at that. <laughs> yeah, um, that magma key tells me a couple things. One, that our runners are not going to have to really struggle for much. And two, that Scala and uh, Ray Spot have somewhere to be this afternoon. Because uh, we are, we're what, a Sand Ruby and a Tower Key from Go Mode at the 20 minute mark? Yeah. On a flag set that is designed to push runners to do all of the checks. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we could know, be in Go Mode after this pan turn in. All right. Well, like the tough quest is weighted to make moon and summon objectives less likely than the other tough quests, but no promises, as this seed is demonstrating. What's the phrase, Commander? Rando gonna rando? Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> A panic are either... I like... Both of yes. these runners are like <laughs> the sort of runners, like you said earlier, you don't know who a jet favors. And I agree because I think most other people, myself included, if I ended up in a jet against either of these runners, I'd be like, oh no, oh no, oh no, I have to out-execute. <laughs> because both of these runners, as we've seen already, are masters when it comes to execution, and with a jet seed, that is often what it comes down to. Yeah, it's incredibly interesting. There's a couple things at play here, um, and Solaris pointed this out based on an interview with Dusty after uh, one of the prior matches with Martin, that Dusty's on record as saying he doesn't like D-Machine grinds. So I'm curious if we end up with, let's say, Sirens Underground, and Dusty checks the shops there, does he then opt against a D-Machine grind and go for either 10 key items or a Siren grind and do some, like, you know, 27 Sirens in a Dream to get both Palums to nuke? There's a lot of different options still on the table, uh, I think D-Machine is the one staring you in the face, but that doesn't mean because of that magma key. It doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to happen. Right. And, like, no matter, like, even for runners of these caliber, um, there's a chance your D-Machine goes sideways. You have, like, 
you, your healing option is Tella or maybe tossing some items. You've got to recover from the flames that you take unless your timing is absolutely phenomenal. You know, it, it could go sideways without true healing. Like, a Sylph Summon shows up and suddenly D Machine looks so much better. But, right. you know, without that, it's, it's a little... It's a little squirrely. Yeah, I, I think that is absolutely true. I also think that Martin and Dusty, should Dusty also go to Baron in here, have a huge decision to make. Um, do you save this cane to be your anchor and your Val insurance after you have triple nuke? Or do you replace this Rydia and take this cane and you go Palum Palum Cane? You just rely on the two Palums, let them do Palum things and go from there. This is a very interesting decision point of this seed, because Kane is that Val insurance you want. I think personally, I'd be out Rydia here for Kane. And Martin and agrees. Martin agrees with you. Goodbye, Renault or Rydia. So as much as I hate to see it, Palum's nukes are just better than Rydia's. That's it true. also means your D-Machine grind can be a cycle shorter. I think both of those are important things to, to keep in mind. Uh, with racers of this caliber that they need to be on the defensive about every possible thing that they're going to be doing. Now we see Dusty just spent the money to buy a Sura. That tells me that he's going to be keeping this Rydia. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is his white mage as well. Yeah. The Sura, like, even if you want to curse Rydia and make her an anchor, which I don't foresee, but even in those circumstances, a Sura will full heal your party two-thirds of the time. Yeah, two-thirds of the time, a Sura is an amazing summon. Uh, the other third of the time, you're usually disappointed, and Martin deciding to buy 40 Thor Rages and 10 Carrots? Mm, okay. Four and one. He was on the one side. Spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, 40 and 10 would have been, uh, well, that's a bold play. Um, I'm not sure what you have on. Uh, Chad is asking why a carrot, and the answer is for the means. Yep. <laughs> Remember, thing, if you've got the time, which I don't think our runners do, blow a whistle, summon the big chocobo, and feed him a carrot. Remember, at the end of the day, this is a game that we play for fun. Embrace the memes, let them be dreams. Now, so we Dusty, need... Dusty, the first one getting underground as Martin has gone through a barren end for that cane. And what are we going to see from a pan walk? That's a great question. A tower key or a sand ruby would be hilarious. Or a strength ring. <laughs> That's hilarious yeah. in a different way. That's an idea. You, know, that you just exists. keep saying tower key or sand ruby every time, sooner or later, you know? <laughs> yeah. Can't be wrong the entire day. Have to eventually be right. Something, something, stop the clock. <laughs> well, even though there's 28 checks here and there's only, you know, what, 24 hours in a day, whatever. That, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too much counting for me. I'm, I'm bad at counting. <laughs> Speaking of counting, Ooh. Martin is counting steps. Yeah. Martin says, now it's time. So, for those of you that do not know the history of what Martin is doing, a little while ago in tournaments, a flag was added to not allow you to run from encounters, where the normal way to find a fight is to go into the giant and run from encounters until you get your D-Machine. So, once that flag was put on, some rather talented members of the community, I know Twisted Flax had a hand in it, created some charts to say, you know what, we'll just let you do the fights outside of Baron where you can actually beat them up and set up your D-Machine that way. Yeah, so it was Twisted Flax making all the fancy charts and doing a lot of the parsing of data, and Simbu, who did a lot of the digging, uh, deep dive into the information, the actual encounter trees. So uh, both of them together did a phenomenal job uh, basically taking a flag that was put in to stop this very grind and being like, haha, we can do it anyway, because that's what speedrunners do. 
if you put in a restriction, they will find something to still make it an efficient way to do things. So that's where we are now. We see Martin running into the giant and uh, he is going to start his grind as soon as he gets the right encounter, either in the save room or the elements room. Uh, looks like it is going to be the elements room based on encounters not being turned on right now. Uh, while Dusty did turn in the pan, completed objective number one, uh, but of note, Dusty did not get any key items. He got a mute knife from Sheila 1 and a crystal armor from Sheila 2. I mean, mute knife, we don't have anybody to swing that mute knife yet, although there is a cane sitting here, but mute knife has definitely done some work in certain seeds, and that crystal armor with no Cecil is just here. Let's try and help you deal with S quarter a little bit. Yeah. The crystal armor especially is wonderful for that. And Martin does find what looks to be his fight here has, I want to say, 10 ether ones, where Dusty, I want to say, has 20 of them. So our runner is going to have no shortage of ways to get through this. Probably going to need to be weaking here uh, to get through these initial searchers and beamers. But I do wonder if Martin's going to go the fast cast route here uh, on his Tello, or if he's just going to opt to uh, start weaking things immediately. It looks like we're just getting weeks immediately here. Yeah, might be week one and take the other one out through the more normal way. And Dusty Griff uh, now also has his party, which is identical. So spent the money on that Asura. Uh, down goes Rydia, though, and both runners with Palum Palum, Kane Tella. There's a fast cast from Martin. And while fast itself is not great, what this helps to do is keep Martin's turn order stable. So that way his Tella does not get turn jumped. Uh, and for the first time, I believe, in this tournament, I think we are getting a Dusty Griff D machine grind, uh, which is like the fifth time for Martin, but the first time for Dusty. <laughs> I mean, you can hate D machine all you want, and I, I, I feel you, Dusty. I'm not a huge fan of this as well, but, you know, sometimes the seed just throws it at you in a way that is impossible to ignore. You mean like this one? <laughs> yeah, I mean like this one. <laughs> we'll see if I can actually keep up with a count. What are we looking for? 22D machines to get Pal and the Nuke? So that's uh, one for Martin. Yeah, so and you're that at... that counts as two with a life potion. <laughs> yeah, so you're at 40,000, give or take. So you, you can do 11, what we call 11 plus 11, which would be killing 11D machines and life glitching each one of them. So, Commander, how does that life glitch actually work? Okay, so, <laughs> a life one spell, whether it be by potion or by cast by a mage, revives its target with a amount of hit points that are equal to a multiple of its vitality stat. Monsters, however, have no vitality, so they are revived with zero hit points, and then immediately so the game doesn't even put the sprite back on the screen for you, but you still get credit for the kill. You have to have the life queued up before the monster can't be targeted, but it has to fire after the monster is taken down, and then you get an extra kill. Yeah, very well said, Commander. That is how the life glitch works. Uh, we do see that Dusty Griff not doing the Baron manipulation. Uh, Dusty Griff is going for the in giant manipulation here. So we get to see both grinds uh, in action. You see that Martin was able to get his set up where he doesn't have to deal with things like this back attack or surprise attack where the enemies are, well, kind of rude. Uh, <laughs> so that is why I, uh, Martin and I am of this, uh, this family of thought as well, that I prefer to set mine up outside of Baron because I'm a wimp and I don't want to deal with encounters on the giant for reasons like Dusty just encountered. Yeah, the, the one advantage to what um, Dusty chose, and we saw him try and take use of it, is it does give you the option of peeking 
the elements spot. If this had been some strange freest of giants, like King Queen Ebelin into Water Hag or something like that, then maybe you don't take the time on this D-Money and you just storm through the giant for some of your XP and carry on with your life. But because it was, um, well, not. Yeah. Decidedly <laughs> not free. <laughs> uh, yeah, th that's a very good decision by our runners to to go through and decide to, yes, D-Machine. So we do have our dueling D-Machine grinds, which again, in this tournament, by and large has been fairly rare, even given the fact that Berserkers have kind of fallen off a little bit in brackets compared to groups. Um, we still haven't seen a lot of dueling D-Machines. So it's, it's kind of cool also, as Scala Kitty is pointing out, that we have the mirrored D-Machine as well. So we get this cool little effect on screen. Mm -hmm. The D-Machines are back to back. And yet it, it's the objectives. We, we saw it laid out for us, although we didn't get a chance to dive into it too much. All the things that push this towards D-Machine. It's not just the party comp that we our runners got handed. Like These objectives really push away, as you said, from the full completion thing. And that full completion is what has made D-Money less attractive throughout the tournament. If you're going to have to go through all the fights and get the XP anyway, it, you can't... You don't, the argument on a grind is always make up the time later. But if you've still got so much to get through that's going to power you up anyway, you're going to build up the power you need just completing the seed and doing a grind to set it off normally doesn't help as much. Yeah, that's certainly true that... Uh... The, the more of the seed there is available, the, the more XP you can kind of gain holistically, if you will. Whereas this particular set of objectives, where it's Giant of Babel, White Spear, Masamune Altar, and Cave Bahamut. Cave Bahamut? Yikes. Masamune Altar? Yikes. Giant of Babel? Yikes. White Spear? By far the easiest of the four doesn't mean it's easy. It's still a moon spot. It's still punchy. It still has good magic. So you're just so inclined to get overpowered as quickly as possible to complete all of those darkness-based objectives. Yeah, it perfectly explained. And that is exactly why both of our runners <laughs> are here taking out these mechanical dragons. These are a dragon-type enemy, aren't they? They are, although they have 20,000 health, so normally you don't see things like uh, Dragoon Spears being used against them or Dragon Whips, Artemis Arrows. Just because every time you hit them, they counter and they punch really hard. Also, never bonk them with a power staff, because then they punch really hard <laughs> twice as fast. <laughs> Bad times. That does sound like that. <laughs> Except maybe for chat that's watching the havoc. <laughs> yes, chat loves that. Can confirm. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll do that AMA another day. So, right. back to the D-Machines. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the thing about D-Machines is while a lot of people poo-poo on the idea of, of D-Machines as a whole, there is still a lot of inherent danger with this grind. Uh, one thing is you can accidentally run but or try to run buffer this fight and you just flee and then you're really sad yes. uh there's a couple of other things like you can wipe to the fire moves because they are percentage based damage it's always going to be 20 percent. so if you're not paying active attention to your health you could find yourself in trouble like if dusty griff here were to take an extra d machine he would perish because he's down to 20 percent on all of his party members so there's a lot to manage on these. You cannot just autopilot this like you can with eggs. So it's it's still a risky thing to do this while giving you that power overwhelming anyway. Right, and, and when you see, um, you know, runners working through it the way Martin and Dusty are, it, it, it looks automatic, but that is simply a testament to their abilities. We, we've all had a D machine go south on us for one reason or another. Another fun way to have it go south, and yeah, I've done this one, is when you're done, forget to turn off the encounters and you're staggering around with a party at about 10% HP because you got burned by the last D machine and suddenly, oh no. 
Yeah, that is a, uh, a rite of passage where you complete your grind, you leave encounters on, you start running out of the giant or to the save point, and then you get back attacked and you die. And you're really sad. And you just feel bad about the game. But, you know, you push on and you remember that you're never going to do that again. Uh, Martin gets 937,000 XP. The Palums need 900k to get Nuke. And that is going to do it for Martin Broadcloak on his grind. So he's done about the 37 minute mark, uh, but is down that pan loop that Dusty has uh, already done. So we shall see when Dusty comes out of this. But right now, uh, you know, Martin will keep that 37 minute timestamp uh, just uh, kind of bolted to our memory. Yep. Um, and to answer the chat in question, the question chat from Newbie. As Esgrond is saying, you usually do a D machine grind for your mages, and it just depends on what mage you bring and what, how many you need to get them to top levels. Rydia takes the longest, and a low-level Rydia is going to need 24 D machines to reach nuke. That's counting each toss of a life potion as an extra D machine, basically, or as some people would put it, 12 plus 12 if you take out 12 D machines and get the life glitch on each one. Yep, absolutely. And we do see Martin here queuing up a Venom, but it doesn't go off. That's a little bit sad. I do wonder if we'll see a reset here, but um, the interesting thing about Venom, it would kind of circumnavigate the hole here. Uh, the second interesting thing here is, um, well, the element spot frankly has no magic attack it is pathetic so realistically poisoning yourself here actually would add time you don't even want to veil here there's no point everyone's going to walk off all of the the magic attacks here uh the awkward thing for martin here is that tella and palum remain alive tella could perish here that palum will be fine but you really want both palums alive for this there is the secondary thought where you could try to set up going into this fight by taking a random encounter. However, because it's the element spots, it full heals you going into it. So that normal yep. thought process of, hey, I could save myself some trouble here. Eh, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah, I will just have telesize everybody before I come in because that will get me past the, oh, oh no. Yeah. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's a lot of annoyance with Golbez at this spot in particular. Uh, it, yeah, welcome front and center to the worst comedy show in Free Enterprise. <laughs> now, I do wonder if at some point we're going to get Martin reviving a second child here because there's not going to be enough damage dealt singularly by this one Palum. And I'm a little worried about this wall eventually running out. Uh, you kind of want, like, maybe even to get a virus off on Tello when this fight starts. Maybe even go in at battle speed three to do, like, virus on Kane, virus on Tella. Because um, while these nukes are doing a lot, you're only getting eight casts with Palum. And eight times, let's say, 7k is only about 50, 55k. So you do run the risk of running out of MP and not being able to finish Golbez off. Yeah, it might have been a... The thought process possibly was that with both Palums up at the same time, both of their veils are ticking and running out. So the thought might have been ale one Palum, throw nukes until he runs out of MP, then revive the other Palum, let him get a veil in, and hopefully, and finish the job. We'll see how it actually plays out. Well, and there is the Y from Golbez. So that's uh, Golbez down for Martin Broadcloak. Uh, and looks like Dusty was done with his grind about the 40 minute mark. So it's still about a three minute difference. But again, that uh, that pan loop has already been done for Dusty, which is probably 90 seconds in and of itself. So I think that that 90 seconds that Martin held earlier is still holding firm here. Uh, looks to be, a, you know, about that advantage at this time. Yep, agreed. We're gonna have to look for something else to slow up our runners. Um, we still could end up with some divergence. We've talked about this possibly being Jetty, but we have uh, 1k summon check and 2k 
decay moon checks on the table that are not as likely to hold key items, although the main the K main wamps we've seen indicate that we've got key items there somewhere. So, but if we don't get a tower key after clearing our required moon objectives and then moving on to clear the rest of the moon, if tower key's buried somewhere on Earth, then it could become an interesting divergence of where's my last item. Yeah, and speaking of interesting things that are happening, Dusty getting the absolute worst possible luck here. Both Palums go down. Yeah. Palum gets revived, but the Tella that had a wall queued then gets bopped by a Lightning 3. There are now some Veils up here, but that was very bad RNG for Dusty. Uh, he's not going to start doing damage until over a minute into this fight with Golbez, which just feels really bad. But on the other side, Martin finding out that a stabby spot with a boss that wants to swing multiple <laughs> times can be surprisingly rude, even when it's air quotes free and is coming in for a second. Oh, he does get the toad to fire this time. Uh, so those guards, while they were definitely on watch to protect this giant of Babel, uh, <laughs> they will be nothing uh, but uh, but cooked toad today. That makes it Ooh. through the second time. The toad is not interrupted, and now it, you're not punchy at all now. He has a fatal queued up here. He may go for a double life glitch here. No, or just a single. Single's good. I don't hate it because without a white mage, you kind of just want all the HP in the world right. on these palums. And this is going to be an extra, what, 225,000? Yeah, on top, like, I think, or an extra 75,000, excuse me, off the 150 base. Mm -hmm. But yeah, every bit of hit points and every bit of wisdom you can pump into these palums to help shrug off the big bangs at the end is going to be welcome. Yeah, absolutely agree. And yeah, there's three more levels for each of those palums, and as well for that cane, who is now doing very, very well. Uh, so Golbez is down on Dusty's side while the guards are down on Martin's side. Uh, and that is going to be almost nearly uh, the ob objective four, complete the Giant of Babel done for both runners. Uh, just a young up here, probably of no interest to Martin, uh, but going to be our first runner with the Giant objective completed. And we'll see if he goes straight to the moon or if he opts for the pan turnips. Right about the 45 for Martin to take off in the big whale after completing the giant. So we'll see when Dusty gets to that point. And of note, uh, one Palum down on Dusty's side, but no Tella alive to kill off. The stone fires and Dusty is, even after getting trolled by Golbez there, now down roughly 90 seconds but up the pan turn -ins. So mm -hmm. Dusty getting through much cleaner on the second fight there, not having to take a reset. And I think this is basically a, a dead even race at this point. Uh, it's really gonna come down to execution from here. They have the same party, the same setup. I think Dusty might have a little bit extra cash, but this is just gonna be straight up who gets the better RNG and who executes better. And that's really what you wanna see even uh, when you have power overwhelming, it still comes down to execution. Dusty. Well, and Dusty's gonna make a switch. Dusty's gonna abandon the Tella anchor and grab a punch mate. This is interesting very interesting because that's also your source of exit yeah so has have we seen exits in a shop i don't i haven't noticed them <laughs> we'll put it that way but you know 
I mean, you consider the route on this move a little bit. Now, ow, like, ten yeah, three, that is super ten interesting. Star Vales. Because unless you want to really gamble on the tower key being on Earth, then you've got to walk out of that moon. Yeah, I mean, you have warp, which is fine. Yeah. But yeah, it's warp. This is it very is that exists. I will I will acknowledge this. Yeah, and there's is... plenty of XP for Yang to get powered up. You know, Yang is going to be contributing. No concerns there. But yeah, this is this is this is definitely unexpected. You, know, you wanted yeah. some divert. If you wanted some divergence, you just got it. Yeah, like Dusty is ahead right now as far as having the checks completed. He also is up a bunch of Cure 3s. Uh, mm -hmm. Both re runners remembering the Cure 3s, but Martin is going to have Exit, which will help for Cave Bahamut. It'll help for the Lunar Subterrain. Uh, it also gives extra utility and a source of Cure 4. Uh, oh boy. Well, here's a thing that you don't like to see. No. Uh, but we also have Martin heading down. This is very interesting. Yeah. Just heading down to do the same arch. <laughs> yeah, pure execution of bonking the airship repeatedly, trying to crush the fame arch cave so you never have to return. I like his style, but I don't think it's going to work out. <laughs> right, but Dusty Griff showing off some knowledge for this Ogo fight. Ogo will counter black magic spells with a hit point percent ice type attack that is ironically named Blaze. But if you reflect the spell off a wall, it does not trigger the counter. But that's okay because this spot is still insanely punchy. Yeah, this is tied for the strongest physical attack spot in the game. Ogo Pogo is a jerk, that is confirmed. Uh, there's our sirens in Feymark, so of no use for our runners. Uh, Indeed. Martin doing some shopping. I wonder if he's looking for sorcerer robes, if he's looking for, uh, charm rods and things like that. Well, Dusty is headed back in for attempt number two with Ogo. I do wonder if after seeing that Ogo, I wouldn't just go do the rest of the moon and come back when I have more hit points and maybe be able to survive a punch here. But Dusty just gunning for these objectives right away. Uh, goes down to battle speed six for Ogopogo here, which will definitely buy him more menu time. But this is still a super rude fight. Yeah. Um, there were some comments about losing Tilla as an anchor, which I'm not, wouldn't be too worried about in Dusty's case. I mean, we've already gotten through the fast spots we need to get through on this seed. If it turns out Tower Key is gated behind, say, that Val at Asura, <laughs> then yes, not having an anchor could be a little bit frightening. Or especially wow. if that's a Wyvern at Leviathan holding it. But if it's just the objectives we see in front of us, none of these are super fast agility spots. They can all be handled by without using an RA1 anchor if you must. Also, uh, <laughs> there's ways to turn Kane into an anchor. We saw a Drain Spear in the Fate Mark shop. Yeah, Drain Spear and a Cursed Ring can turn him into a pretty decent anchor. Uh, Martin going with the approach of, do you know if Val has perfect magic defense or not? If you do know, you don't cast. If you don't know, you just go ahead and you cast anyway. Uh, but Martin's saying, no, this Val, probably not. Uh, we're good. There was also a Sparkle... Uh, hanging out there. Uh, looks like he may be going back for this foul. This is incredibly interesting from both runners. Uh, yeah. The the lack of the Tela on Dusty's side and going after this Fey March instead of the Lunar Objectives on Martin's side. Both of these are very, very interesting choices to me. Mm -hmm. It's um, It's a thing, to be sure. It looks like... Hella uh, Yang Anchor is what's happening as he kamikazes into Kane to fall? Hmm. Yeah, if you kamikaze into Ogo Pogo, he, uh, Ogo counters with Blaze, so yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. do that. Uh, oh, Kane man. has the best HP pool, so it makes sense. But again, it's very curious opting to go with a Yang over a Tela, but yeah, Dusty is through. Right. 
it gets through. That, 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 that doesn't surprise me. But yeah, to pick up Yang and prefer him as an anchor over Ella is... Wow. <laughs> hey, we can do an unnecessary forge now. <laughs> sure. It can be crystal armor that we can sell. <laughs> Although it will probably be adamant armor and that will be hilarious. <laughs> Looks like Val back in her tornado bikini form, uh, casting weak on a Palom with a queued up nuke, and Kane, I believe, has a jump queued as well right now. So I think it's just one more nuke here, and uh, and this fight will be done once the jump resolves. I kind of wonder. Uh, it's definitely worth asking Martin afterwards when he finished his D money. Was he think? I know Dusty doesn't like to D-Money, and I know, goodness knows, this party screamed D-Money. What if he didn't? And what's the thing Dusty's likely to not do? And maybe that's why Martin's in this Fey March. Yeah, it could absolutely be. And there is just a lightsaber. Martin says, I will be resetting now. Thank you very much. Uh, and I think he's going to go tackle the, uh, the king spot here. Puts that cane back in the back row. Uh, puts that Palom now back in the back row. Says, let me swap things up here. Uh, and meanwhile, Dusty, he is likely going to go... Well, I mean, he could go bottom of the moon or Murasami Altar has his choice. Yeah, Murasami is not an objective, but he could give it a look. And hello, I hailed him in a punchy spot. That's yeah. what I like to see. I mean, it's going to hurt, but double nuke... And even like a single blink from from Tello will be okay here. Um, and here we see the advantage of Palom having just a little more hit points as he survives yep. the first punch with 162. <laughs> yep, that's it's huge. Like oh, and there goes Tello, which is fine. Tello acted as half a blink. That's all you could ever Great. want. He's doing his he's doing his job. <laughs> I think we need five nukes on Martin's side though, so we do need to get yeah. one more nuke off beyond what's queued as we see Dusty making the walk down to the bottom of the lunar subterrain. So this is going to be uh, a, a full bottom of the moon clear on his part. And we do see a little bit of an uh-oh here on Martin's side. Uh, the wrong characters are getting bopped in, in order here. This nuke needs to fire now, and this nuke needs to roll high in order to keep this pale dim. And that is not high enough. Oh, it is high enough. It's just it. Barely. Like, honestly, that was pretty decent targeting. Kane took two hits. Tella took a hit. It, it, it was legit. Oh. <laughs> Yay, so, we're closer to 10 key items. A spoon and a lightsaber. Martin's gamble of taking on, or what I personally perceive to be a gamble of taking on this Fey March does not pay off. Uh, do we see Martin chase the Earth Crystal now? And do we have an example of runners metagaming each other, where Dusty right. thinks Martin is going to go to the moon and Martin thinks Dusty is going to go to the Earth, and they end up doing the exact opposite thing? See, Dusty thought that Martin thought that Dusty wasn't going <laughs> to do money, so Dusty had to do money to throw Martin off his game. <laughs> well, we now see Martin going to the moon, so... Oh, hey, uh, look at that water hack. <laughs> and there, yeah, there's a water hack, so that's a thing that exists. That, that's pretty casual. It's a great find for our runners. That's for sure. It's a nice, easy fight at the Masamune altar, which is a very, very rude spot historically. Yes. Yes, it is. But of note, while Dusty is up Cave Bahamut, he does not have exit to get out of this moon. And I still do worry that that is going to cost him somewhere in the neighborhood of two full minutes getting back out of here. And with how close these runners have been in their first two races, two minutes is a lot of time. There is a hook. We don't have the rat tail. We don't have the pink tail yet. So that hook doesn't do a ton, but it is objective number six on the board for Dusty Griff. So now up two objectives on Mark. Go ahead and get that save in, Dusty, before moving on to your white spear. Mm. 
me see how Martin chooses to tackle this Ogo. Yeah, Martin has a, a rougher time for this Ogo Pogo, simply based on the fact that he doesn't have a stack of 20 tier threes. So he needs to get lucky on his targeting here. Any single attack that goes to that Star Veiled Palom drops that Star Veiled Palom. Uh, so he needs to dodge three, maybe four attacks. Oh, he does have three Cure Threes, I apologize. Maybe this Palom doesn't get one shot. Well, but he too is bouncing walls to avoid the counters and just keeping things moving along. Dusty finding a simple Mylon Z here at the White Spear Altar. You know, it's it's Zed. He, he says you should fall into the ravine, and you say, no, you. <laughs> Still a very punchy Mylon Zed, though, of note. True. Uh, that it's it's not something you can take lightly. You really can't take anything lightly on these moves. They're all very punchy. They all have very high magic attack. Uh, but Martin, I believe, is now just one nuke away, but that is a problem. That was your big boomer. Uh, Martin is going to wreck nuke here, so this basically has to kill or this fight ends in a very unfortunate manner for Martin, uh, but this fight ends. Okay, so he, he gets through it first attempt, whereas Dusty did have to take a reset. So slight time gain there for Martin, uh, getting his adamant rock, and will also be able to use a life potion and exit out of here. Not to keep harping on that, but having exit is going to save Martin time. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, look at this free moon. Look at this moon. Do you know that Ogo, you, you you made the comment when we saw the Ogo. Maybe you just come back when you have more levels. There were yep. levels to be had at the bottom <laughs> of the moon. <laughs> yeah, with a mage party especially, I'm not a fan of taking on Ogo Pogo at Cave Bahamut. That is just gross, and I don't like it. There's a rat tail to go with that hook, though. So... Dusty Griff finding some items down here on the bottom of the moon that could turn into value. And we shall see what the uh, Crystal Sword Altar, the Vanilla Wyvern location, has to offer our runners in the way of both a boss and a key item check. Uh, have we seen Antlion yet? We have not seen Antlion yet. Okay. Also, this is Antlion's natural either. habitat. The Bygun wouldn't be as bad. You've got two Quack Kids that can probably keep the arms locked still could be potentially rude depending on how the early part of that fight goes. Yeah, the issue with Bygan is it's three attacks, this spot's super punchy, and we have no armor for the mages whatsoever. Uh, or it could well, be more free things, like dolls. Yeah, yeah this, this <laughs> bottom of the moon this bottom of the moon doesn't exist. Like... <laughs> You, like, yeah. as a runner, like, if you're in our runner's shoes, do you start to regret your D-Machine seeing all this free experience on the moon? <laughs> no, not for a second. Uh, because one of the things about this moon is, uh, well, oh, there's wow. our required tower key. So this bottom of the moon dive looking better and better for Dusty Griff, who is now but a sand ruby away from go mode. Uh, so Dusty has an important decision to make here. Does he do the Murasame altar? Or does he go back to Earth and chase the tower key and the rat tail. Uh, it's two checks, one of which is an objective versus a moon spot that is not. Uh, Dusty also now, again, unfortunately, has to make this very long walk and or warp out of the lunar <laughs> subterranean. Last time this, it was, he got to the, <laughs> that door at a minute, an hour and 35 seconds. So let's just see how long it takes him to get back up to the top from that point. I'd like to. He spent a little bit of time to get there, so it'll be a little more than our one hour and 35 seconds, but I'm just curious. It's long enough that it feels bad. <laughs> but how bad but I, is it really? Yeah, just I don't it know if it feels bad. It doesn't yeah. prove that it's terrible, you know? I, I want science. That's fair. Science is we, good. We are coming up here to LST4. We're coming through here. We're almost at the one minute mark from the door that I mentioned. So it's actually less than a minute to get from the door that is between the two, or it's right on a minute, to get from the door between, you know, where you decide crystal sword altar or ribbon room and back up to the entrance of the LST. One minute. Yeah, and Dusty also saying, I'm just going to go straight for this Murasame altar. Sure. Uh, whew. 
I would turn my battle speed down. Yeah, this is this is safety wyvern territory. Right. Because you haven't and had a the, save in a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly with this. Oh, that's, hey, look, it's a bygone. <laughs> that's also a really good boss to be on battle speed six for, to be yes. completely honest. Because you can drop the quake in and have a very good chance of keeping those arms down because bygone's not going to punch you if those arms are out of the way unless he had it queued up. He's just going to go, I'm going to bring my arms back. Yeah, now one of the other kind of cool features here is instead of queuing a quake, you can queue a nuke, which Dusty is doing here, and reflect it off whoever acquires this wall, uh, so long as the arms don't regenerate beforehand. So Dusty is able to get this nuke off using Bygan's own walls against it. Uh, very heads up from Dusty to, to make this play. That's an extra like 3,000 damage that gets pushed. Uh, I think he may have just nuked the wrong Palom here, though, which is a bit of an uh-oh. I think his arrow was in fast enough. Okay. Also, the battle speed six is giving him more time to land, you know, more time to squeeze those nukes in. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad that, uh, you know, it was just on my end, which is surprising no one, uh, <laughs> that that pointer didn't <laughs> didn't go to the I place mean, that I was hoping it went to. As fast <laughs> as these runners are menuing and cycling through, like you could be sitting at their screen, <laughs> watching over their shoulder and miss that pointer going to its location. <laughs> I barely saw it. <laughs> Your eyes are better than mine, but it does look it. like... We get another Quake here. Another nuke is coming out. Not needed, though. Dusty has now full clear the moon uh, under an hour and five minutes. That is incredibly rapid. Uh, with Martin now having done the the Fey March, is clearing the rest of this moon, but that is a barren key for Dusty Grip from the Murasame altar. Lots and lots of stuff to chase from this moon, which is probably advantage Dusty at this point. Yeah, he's out in front. He's clear out the moon, and yes, I'm timing this part too. This part isn't nearly <laughs> as long. <laughs> but, so call this one 30 seconds. So if we call it roughly 30 seconds to get from the crystal sword altar to the fork, then that's a total of two minutes minus time spent going into the menu to cast exit. So not having Tella, you could call it, you know, a little under two minutes you lose there on the LST, which is probably less than the community would have guessed if you just said, put them on the spot and say, hey, what number do you think? It it's, does hinge it's on less being than able I would have guessed. take that Murasame <laughs> altar after the long walk straight off. Yeah, absolutely. It's It's definitely less than I would have guessed, so... I think that is uh, certainly some good information to have garnered from this, that maybe it isn't the end of the world if you have to walk it out, especially if you're willing to take the Murasame altar on the way back. So we've been spending a lot of time talking about these runners because they have been showing off some things, but while we've got a quick moment, I want to thank Scala Kitty for doing the restream and rolling up this wonderful seed and escrunt for lighting up all of the pretty buttons and keeping them away from Possum. Give them a follow and give our amazing runners a follow as well. And also, Possum is also another one of these amazing runners and you can learn a lot in his stream too. So go hang out there and see what's happening. And also thank you, of course, to you, Commander Leonhart, for keeping me in line and away from said buttons so that uh, <laughs> chat can follow along at home with what is happening here. Uh, and speaking of said buttons, things like the rat tail getting turned in, but no buttons being lit up because it was just a ninja sword for an edge we have not located yet in the seed. Uh, and also thank you again to RPG Limit Break for letting us host this fantastic uh, edition of Free Enterprise Adamant Cup Racing uh, on their channel. So thank you again, RPG Limit Break. Here, here. Dusty going exactly where you'd expect under the circumstances. Got a tower key in hand. Gonna go to this objective. Probably gonna full clear the tower while he's here in case the sand ruby's at the top. And we'll see how it goes. Yep, absolutely makes sense. Um, you're at this point getting a tower key and tower check. Looking at two key item 
uh, two key items that could come from it. If either one of those key items is a sand ruby, you're in go mode at what is frankly a ridiculous time would be like the hour and 10 minute mark on these flags. I know that this, you know, <laughs> looks like it could be a jet, feels like it's a jet. You have all the power in the world, but even with all the power in the world, getting into go mode is just patently absurd on these flags at this speed. We have the stabby imps in the French vanilla spot dancing at the top of the tower. So they, they broke out of the super cannon room and they're taking over. Yeah, and those dark imps not going to pose much of a threat at this point. Uh, one stone cast, probably going to queue up a second stone cast if the first one doesn't fire. Uh, but with Palum's wisdom, with uh, 2300 health, pretty likely it hits. And there is that off slot stone. I am jealous. I can never get that to work. Uh, but well done to, to Dusty Griff. And there is the sand ruby. That is go mode for Dusty Griff. <laughs> And the uh, the Fay March gamble for Martin Broadcloak yeah. may very well have been the deciding factor in this race. Do your objectives, folks. One of the oldest rules of free enterprise. You never know when your objective is going to lead straight to the next one, and everything else is just a detour. Oh, it's my lot of friends. Yeah, nothing but uh, a quake or a virus here uh, that, you know, won't just handle these Mylon and friends. And then there's no pass as of yet. But yeah, we're going to see uh, to see what becomes of this super cannon check. See who's at the Sand Ruby. And then uh, Dusty Griff is going to be making the walk. Meanwhile, Martin has decided that nuking Kane felt like a good decision at this juncture. Uh, and that's uh, that's going to be a bit of a feels bad moment there. That quake also may have been early, so this is a little bit dangerous for Martin. Uh, might be panicking yeah. a little bit at how this fight is going. Could have been mm -hmm. a dropped input or something there. Although, at least the body got taken down. So as long as you just get through without explodes, and here comes the other quake, then we're fine. Yep, and there, there is go. that quake. Yep. Yeah, Martin just a little early. Even though the arms were on the screen when the quake fired, they weren't on when the command was input, so they were not targeted. And so yeah, that is why nothing happened to them. Gotta wait for that uh, that set of arms to actually have the arrows on top of it, so you have that visual identifier. Uh, but speaking of visual identifiers, that is the bridge crumbling from the super cannon room being destroyed. Dusty Griff is going to be rewarded with his final key item check, which is conveniently... Andy Lancaster from chat calls it! Conveniently the pass, <laughs> because why wouldn't it be? Oh. And yeah, we're... Yeah, Scala, uh, you got places to be, my friend. Uh, Racebot apparently wants an upgrade or something before the, the round of four because we're, we're like five, seven minutes away from being done here. But if you Maybe really less. like your Yang anchor, Dusty, we've got one for you here at the last minute. <laughs> Just kind of hilarious, all that effort put into keeping Yang down. And there was a base level Yang right here in the bed. <laughs> Martin going straight on that path is, is going to make the same play and is just a little bit behind because, because as you said, that fame march joke. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those instances where forcing divergence. It's it's a great thing to do if you think the seed is going to lend itself to a full clear. With yeah, how many, it yeah, it uh, does. With how many lunar objectives there were, though, mm -hmm. I am very surprised that Martin did not dive them right along with Dusty. But speaking of diving right along into things, we have two palums, we have a cane, we have an anchor on Dusty's side, a yanker, as we love to call it. <laughs> There's a pass that pass is being used, 
We have a bunch of flags in chat. It is not even 5.30 p.m. on this side, so I don't know why we're putting Z flags out there. It's not nap time, chat. Relax. Commander, can you explain what's going on? Because I don't get it. All right. So we've seen a lot of things randomized and a lot of things shifted around here. Do not shift Zoromus around. There is no chance you're going to wander into Antlion Cave and suddenly be big banged and black holed and be like, how do I deal with this? I don't understand. But what we do randomize is the Z Sprite. When the crystals used on Zoromus and his true colors are revealed, it is one of, we might be almost at 600 now, sprites randomly. And one of them is randomly selected. Most of them have been done by our wonderful art dev, Scala Kitty. And because of that, there's a question that we like to ask, isn't there? Awesome? There is. And that question, whilst we see these poor Darkens getting blown to smithereens on Martin's side, that question on Dusty Griff's side as this crystal goes out for Zeromus is whose butt are we going to kick this afternoon? And is Ooh, it cute? Yeah. And does it have a hat? And is it cute? I mean, it's always cute, unless it's wrinkleless. Ugh. <laughs> and it looks like today's butt it is a well. It that's is, uh, that's just uh, it's aromas. aromas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll work. That'll work. Zoromus the Condemned, I believe, is the full name of this particular Esper from Final Fantasy XII. Or the Condemner? Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, this is some form of strange vanilla, right? Yeah, call it. <laughs> French vanilla, I don't know, time-traveled vanilla. Uh, of note, Dusty Griff is going for reflect strats here. Uh, he is going to look to skip Zeromus' HP refill. Uh, back in the SNES days, you were capped at 65,000 health due to how, you know, two to the whatever caps at that number, like 65, 535 or whatever. So Zeromus has a refill at, at uh, 45,000 health. Dusty will not be doing any direct damage in this fight, just going to be reflecting nukes, which I think he's at roughly 28, 29,000 damage right now. Uh, which is ever so slightly on the low side, but with these two nukers, as long as Kane is throwing out uh, Cure Threes and Dusty is getting his run buffers, this should be fairly rudimentary here and, and fairly sound on Dusty's part. Yeah, you never want to take the Romas for granted, especially if you're doing anything other than a white mage and a warrior. But definitely for someone of Dusty's caliber, this should be fairly straightforward for him. Yeah, the only way that this goes really sideways is if there's a second Big Bang and both Palums go down. Mm -hmm. But with those Cure Threes coming out and with the levels on those Palums, you know, you don't want to call it over because, you, you, again, you cannot take Zeromus lightly. But that's a lot of HP to get Big Banged out of, so... You know, I think that on Dusty's side, we're looking pretty good here. I think we need one more nuke after this one, so I do think we see a second Big Bang if my math is right. Uh, that was a really high roll, though. And, oh, doesn't quite get there. Yeah, that Palom's got somewhere to be. And here is that Big Bang. Let us see the rolls. 2400 is the theoretical maximum. And we get pretty high, but Palom's are still hanging out with about 300 each. Yeah, and a black hole is the next queued item from Zeromus here, but these nukes are going to take Zeromus out in the meantime. And Dusty Griff, with that crack, flash, and boom, is going to be moving on to the round of four in the Adamant Cup. Ho-hum, another day for Dusty Griff. Top four in a free enterprise, free enterprise tournament. But boy, was he pushed to the limit by Martin Brock. Look, I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> the, the, there's nothing ho hum about this race. I mean, Martin has played Dusty close in every match he's ever been up against him, and this was no exception. And speaking of which, we are joined in chat by Dusty Griff. GG. Hey, GGs. Yeah, so Dusty Griff, uh, huge GGs. Welcome to the round of four. Very well done, my friend. Uh, my first question to you. I just have to ask, why Yang over Tella? I gotta know. 
just just because I accidentally got him levels during the D machine grind, so it was just getting too speedy for me. So it was just like messing me up. So I just wanted to make sure I had that RA one and everything set up. Gotcha. So it was an agility thing, and it yeah. just so happened that you were kind of stuck without exit at that point. Because we were kind of wondering what the the rationale was, and that makes total sense. Yeah, that was, it was just a mistake that I left them up during the grind. I was like, and I, I was like, it, it's a, it will just make everything on the moon better to have some RA one set up, which I was extremely happy for after that point, which I saw Ogo at Cave Bahamut because. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was nasty as it was. So yeah, I, I definitely was happy enough to just take whoever and throw them in the middle. But it did hurt to lose that exit there. Um, but I, I figured, like with all the clearing of moon I have to do, it just made sense. Absolutely. And I'll, I got one more question, and I'll, I'll turn the mic over to Commander. Uh, you are on record as saying you're not the biggest fan of D machine grinds. <laughs> Uh, but have you ever had a seed stare you more in the face <laughs> to do a D machine grind than this one? <laughs> it was like this, like flashing lights, like D machines, get your D machines, get your D machines, and then like a flaming pile of garbage was every other option in that seed. So <laughs> it's like, what, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, when you're that early on and you see right in front of you all the things you have to do, basically, right? You know, you have to clear all these moon spots, you have to do all these things. It it was a no brainer, and, and I I haven't practiced D machine in a while, but my D machine went extremely spot one of the smoothest I think I've ever had. <laughs> funny enough, um, even with four characters, so I was extremely happy with it. But uh, I was nervous going into it, and especially towards the end, my heart was pounding because, like you said earlier, Martin played amazing this whole series, and I knew he'd be making a lot of the same decisions I made with Seed, so it was kind of interesting. But yeah, it was, it was, there was no other option, I felt like. It was like, if I made another option, I'm adding 10, 15 minutes to the Seed, basically. Yeah, and you knew you didn't have the 10, 15 minutes, to be sure. Um, and I don't know if you got a chance to talk to Martin, but the little bit of divergence in this Jetty Seed is that after he got done, he checked on the Fae March freebie and then took a quick look at the Fae March bosses, which were Valid Asura and Pale Dim at Leviathan, and he ended up getting nothing for his trouble there. Right. Yeah, that that's a shame. And I, I talking to Martin briefly after uh, after I finished this, uh, it's it's. It made a lot of sense for him to do that because he didn't, where he didn't turn and pan pre going through his grind and everything. So I could see the logic behind wanting to go do that and then get some checks mixed in there as well. But uh, yeah, it's <laughs> there's just so few things you had to do this seed, which you can't say that very often for <laughs> uh, seven objectives, seven out of seven objectives. <laughs> you know, you can't say very often that you had to do so few things to get to go mode. Um, so every additional check you have to do hurts obviously so yeah that's just definitely just kind of the way it goes <laughs> this this seed but the weirdest seed i think i've played the brackets yet for sure yeah i mean <laughs> just the number of times that it just laid out you just had to be feeling it towards the end like okay apparently scala had somewhere to be clearly she had somewhere to be oh look there's the tower <laughs> key on the moon I guess we're on the move I, I don't, uh, I'm looking at my watch. Is top of tower. Oh, yeah. wait, it is. It wonder is, if yeah. there's a pass coming out of the tower. Oh, wait, there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at my watch like, oh, I guess I'll be done early tonight. <laughs> you know, right. I can relax <laughs> after. But as Possum said, this does get you into the semifinals, uh, a place you're no stranger to. Um, how are you looking for next week? Any thoughts about anything you've picked up along the way that, you know, you need to change things? Or are you pretty much settled into this flag set and know what you're going to do, depending on what the seed gives you? I I don't know anymore. <laughs> <'cause> I, <laughs> Is that right? I, 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 I still do not really like going for D-Machines, but man, was it ever so strong in this seed. This seed in particular, you had to do it, but... I kind of recognize how good of an option that is um, often on these flag on brackets flags um, if you have to set up for it. So I, I think I'm just going to have to lean into that a bit more, realize that I can comfortably get through D machines in not the longest period of time, and then you're ready to clear through the rest of the seed. So that's something I think 
in the semis uh, moving forward. I'm gonna probably take the heart a bit more to try and utilize that because I was like I said in previous races I just try to stick away from it as much as I can. And uh, yeah, that's gonna burn me if I keep doing that. So it could have burned me tonight if I was like, ah, D machine's boring. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> you know, I'd still be playing the seed ten minutes from now probably. <laughs> so yeah. I liked well, when I liked when you went up there. How you were like. No, oh, don't make me do it if I have to. Maybe I can just peek the element spot. Free XP. Maybe I won't have to do machine. Ha ha ha! You're gonna do money. You're 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 really in my brain. <laughs> That's exactly right. It was like, can I can I get away with not doing part of it at least? And no, 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 I can't. <laughs> yeah, and I will say, you know. As much as you may not like D Machine, you may joke about it personally, whatever your your dispositions are to it, flexibility is an ability at the end of the day. And you being flexible enough. Whether it, you know, took you to the the round of eight to realize it or not, but being willing to do that D Machine grind. That is yeah. that's huge kudos because we all have things in this game. We we have our you know, our predispositions to what we like and what we don't. And that flexibility is huge. So I, I think you should be commended for for being able to pivot even if it was you know thrown into your face and 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 crammed crammed right into your view and your focus yeah you still have to be willing to do it at the end of the day and i exactly. think that needs to be commended exactly and I, and I knew if i leaned into it i was like i've done this i've done you know it's just like riding a bike you don't forget how and it's yeah yeah, I, I knew I could just haul it out and do it. And it, like I said, I was, I felt really comfortable at it. I think I was some of my best menuing in the tournament so far in this match. It felt really smooth, um, other than a, a few small things here and there. Um, and D Machine was was no uh, uh, was no different. It, it felt like that went super smooth for me. Like it was just like clockwork. So uh, I'm I'm super glad I worked out the way it did and. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting moving forward. If I'm gonna, we'll see if I get to, if I do w one more D machine this tournament. We'll see. But... <laughs> well, I I do know. Uh, here's some bonus scouting for you. Your next <laughs> opponent also hates D machines, so uh, there you go. Uh, we can yes. have both of you commiserating together uh, yeah. to, to avoid them at all costs. We, maybe we can get a, an agreement going for uh, the anti D machine club and uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah I, I think i've exhausted my questions and comments uh commander do you have anything else for our winner this evening dusty Griff? no just congratulations on getting by another very tough opponent and i'm sure you're gonna the two of you are gonna give us a great match in the semifinals and i'm looking forward to it uh, thanks so much yeah I, it's been an awesome series um super ggs to martin again played extremely uh, impressively and I, I'm just so happy that we, we got to put on another good show uh, always a fun opponent to play against uh, thanks to you Commander and Posmorphus for commentating uh, Scala for restreaming for tracking appreciate it all and uh, yeah looking forward to the next round absolutely well thank you again Dusty always a pleasure to get to to cast and watch your matches and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the round of four and potentially further Cheers, friends. And folks, we will be uh, letting some music play uh, for just a second while we await our runner up this evening. But first in our hearts, Martin Broadcloak. So enjoy the, uh, the surfing theme from Pokemon Red and Blue for the time being. Okay, that's enough music. Hi! <laughs> An entrance like no other from a man like no other. Dude. Martin, GG's my friend. Um, you you didn't get the result I know you wanted this evening, but you played a heck of a, ra heck of a race. I gotta ask uh, the, you know, the burning question, though. Mm. It's two words. One is yep. Fay March, and the yep. other is why. You know, if I had turned that pan in before I went and did D Money, uh, uh, that decision Martin, tree comes out completely muted. differently. But, I, hi. No, oh, I can I can hear Martin, Commander. Oh, that's on me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am here. Uh, 
My bad. Yeah, no, that's exactly why. Is I wanted... We talked about this days before the race, where it's like, you know, I, I would love to force Dusty's hand into doing D-Money. And then Scala decided to beat me at the punch and, you know, roll this seed. So, you know, my, <laughs> my, my hands were kind of tied on that one. Um, so, you know, not that I believe for a second that there was any chance that Dusty stayed on Earth doing Earth things. But I, I figured the march would be something he wouldn't touch. Mm -hmm. And after that pan turned into an earth crystal, which I wanted no part of whatsoever, um, I decided I was going to pull the trigger on the march and hopefully just it have something or a chaining something and didn't work out this time. And after that, it's like, all right, well, now I need to be on the moon. So did the entire moon, came back. Tower key led me straight to tower. Bob's your uncle, and that's the ball game. So, yeah, the unfortunate yeah. decision didn't work out this time, but the entertainment value through the roof. That's all I cared about. So, yeah, uh, it was a wonderful series. I will say, you know, you both made the decision to take Kane over Ridia uh, mm -hmm. for Val insurance, which I think that we all agree is, you know, a very smart play. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you leverage that. If you didn't have that cane, I'm sure you don't touch that Fey March at that point, or certainly not the Val half of it. So yeah. it's one of those situations where you made the right choice, and, you know, the seed just said not today. But there will be plenty other days for you, my friend, uh, with the, the quality and caliber of runner you are. Yeah, I I had a lot of fun with this tournament facing everyone, and, you know, Ograx was not an easy group to get out of and to get this far I'm that's that's two top eights back to back, so I'm I'm not disappointed with how I played, but I'll be back. I'll, I'll I will quietly bide my time and await ZZ five, and uh, this this will not be the last that uh, you see of the old man. So, yeah, I'd hear it because <laughs> you're <laughs> you know you definitely know what you're doing with this randomizer, and you're a lot of fun to watch, and you've willingly subject yourself to much much ruder than this flag set on a regular basis mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this looks like a walk in the park doesn't it right <laughs> and this is why martin becomes more and more terrifying as tournaments go on in group stage remember he went three and two and barely squeaked in here on a planet and then you see him in the top eight pushing one of the all-time greats of free enterprise to the limit and beyond he, he Martin only gets better as the flags get harder. So here, someone here. to definitely look out for as okay. we continue on to future tournaments. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Hopefully everyone out in chat had a great time with it. I did. Um, I'm looking forward to watching this back. Sounds like it was a, it was a time to be had. So uh, definitely going to watch this one back, but thank you. Thank you, commander. Thank you, possum. Thank you, grunt. Thank you, Scala. That that was uh that was exactly ironically that was exactly the seed I was hoping for to go against you know Dusty and myself and it turned out exactly how I thought it would so I'm I'm very very happy for Dusty I expect him to do great things continuing on in the tournament and yeah well one last question for you Martin and then yeah, we'll sure. let you enjoy the rest of your evening. What are your plans for the off season? The, oh, the club season. Wait, I'm Any, supposed anything? to have plans? Oh, uh, did did I write something down? Oh god, plans? Uh uh ladder? Um probably ladder, get back to the menagerie, uh do that style flag set. Um probably just you know, do some other things, just take a little detox from free enterprise for a little bit and then uh you know. Probably some uh, <clears throat> behind the scenes practice, and uh, I'll be I'll be ready for the next tournament, whatever shape or iteration it forms. So, yeah, good to hear. Awesome, looking forward to it. And GG's once again. Oh, and comms, comms, yes, lots of comms. right, right, comms. Yeah, comms. I got, I, yeah, I get I got you back in here. Too. That's yes. good times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I will let you guys get out of here. Thank, thank you once again. I, I appreciate all of you, and uh, I'll see you again soon. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Martin, for letting us uh, commentate and watch your race. And you have yourself a great evening, GG, again. Thank you. Well, that was Commander Broadhook, our runner up for tonight, who's run in the tournament. Spectacular run in the tournament has unfortunately come to an end. But as he said, we'll be seeing more of him in the future. So keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Commander, I just want to say once again, uh, thank you to you for this amazing commentary experience. Uh, excellent job, as always. Love to get to work with you and so glad you could be back on the mic. I know you've had a very busy time recently, and I am honored to be able to do this with you again. And thank you to Scully Kitty and Esk Run behind the scenes. And of course, to our runners for putting on not just an amazing race today, but three amazing races in their match. Uh, Dusty Griff and Martin Brockbloak. Give everybody your love. Give them a follow. And uh, make sure to, to spread that free enterprise love for wherever you go. Awesome. It was, it was terrific to work with you again. It was, a, it was a great way to get back into things. And for everyone in chat, yep, this was the last match of the quarterfinals. So we are done with the tournament for the week. But we do still have some more free enterprise coming your way. Yeah, and that free enterprise coming your way will be by the runner Escrunt, who y'all may recognize from uh, doing the tracking this evening. So Escrunt is doing uh, some async play on their stream, and we are going to get to go watch. Uh, even though Escrunt knows what happened in this race, we do still ask in case there are <laughs> folks in Escrunt's chat who don't, that you don't spoil, or we will find you, newspaper you, possibly bonk you, but we don't like spoilers around here. Uh, so please try to keep those to a minimum. And of course, one last huge thank you to RPG Limit Break for letting us put on this and many of our Adam and Cup races. Y'all are awesome, and we thank you so much.